Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here in London at the Beaumont. And I have actually was here back in 2018 before all the pandemic. And I really love this hotel. Uh, and I love it today. And we have a new, the new gen general manager, actually he's the managing director of the Beaumont, is Duncan Palmer. He's with us today. And Duncan's going to tell us all about what's been going on during the pandemic. And there's been a fair number of changes to the hotel. Nothing that's going to dissuade your customers because this was a favorite, is a favorite of Americans. Uh, but you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Duncan, first of all, you, you arrived, I think, last year uh, to take over the hotel. Talk a little bit about your background. Well, I arrived exactly a year ago, James, okay. and, uh, you know, I've spent uh, quite a lot of my career in the Far East, uh, originally starting, though, here in the UK with Trust House Ford, you moved to the Middle East uh, in, in the early 80s. And then I spent 12 years with Mandarin Oriental in Macau, Philippines, Thailand, and Indonesia. Returned to London, ran the Savoy for eight years uh, and the Connaught, uh, four years in each property. Went out to the Far East again. I have this love for, the, for, for Asia as well, but keeping in touch with London. And then I took over the flagship uh, of Langham and created the Langham flagship, uh, you know, just above uh, Regent Street there. Uh, had 12 years with them, uh, five years establishing the flagship, seven years sort of traveling around the world with them and, and also finishing up at the Langham uh, L London. Uh, and I ended up at the Murray in Hong Kong, an iconic uh, 60s building, as I did with the Langham in Chicago. And so, you know, did that for three years. And then I've come back to London and met the owner, the new owner here at the Beaumont. Uh, and I knew the Beaumont from days of old, as you, as you rightly say, and it's a wonderful hotel. So I thought it was a great opportunity to to come back into London and to uh, finish my career here at the Beaumont. So that's what attracted you to come back here to the Beaumont, right? It was indeed. The hotel itself got a great reputation, not just for the hotel itself, but the clientele that it is attracted in its eight years since it's been here. Uh, the previous general manager, Yanis, was a wonderful man and did a great job uh, with previous ownership. And the hotel, for something that's only eight years old, has been extremely well received by a lot of travel agents and uh, people using the hotel uh, around the world. Um, it's sit in a very wonderful part of Mayfair, a very exclusive part of Mayfair, away from any of the main streets. So it's become quite a destination. So that attracted me straight away to come here to continue the journey that it started. And whilst we, as you alluded earlier, have done some work at the hotel, uh, we really have kept the overall ethos of the, the Art Deco aspect of the building alive and, and moved it forward. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, the, the, the beginnings of the hotel, people think it's, it's been here for years, but it's actually only eight years old. And uh, it has this wonderful uh, ambiance about it. Uh, that really, you know, you can't walk in, it's so beautiful, it's all Art Deco, incredible art, uh, but it was, I, if I, the, the real story is that it's, it started life as the car park for Selfridges, the department store, which is literally a block away, right? It, it did indeed, a very interesting story, and, and I'm very close to the CEO of Telfordges right now. We work together on various marketing employees, but we're 150 yards away from the main entrance of a, a wonderful department store that has been evolving itself. Um, it's uh, You've got to pinch yourself. Eight years to establish the Beaumont and do as well as some of the other uh, luxury hotels that have been in excess of 100 years in London. Uh, the reputation of the service is right up there. So it, it really is a very um, formidable hotel for the future. Uh, we spent seven or eight million pounds on the hotel, uh, redoing all the public areas and and we've been doing touch-ups, obviously, during the COVID time in all the guest rooms. And we've redone all the guest corridors. And we have other plans uh, for it. Um, we're going to talk about those. But the uh, I guess I want to start by talking about the accommodations. How many rooms and suites do you have? Uh, 72 rooms, uh, 11 suites in the property. Uh, we're st st sitting in the uh, Gormley suite here, which is an iconic uh, suite done by the David Gormley, the famous artist. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, suite up on the top of the hotel that has a wonderful terrace, the Roosevelt. Suite. So again, one of the reasons why we've got a good American clientele there, there is a good American edge and a good Art Deco aspect uh, to it. Now, and I know I'm staying in the Mayfair suite, which is gorgeous, actually only on the first floor, but it's a beautiful room. Uh, the last time I was here in 2018, I stayed on one of your top floor uh, uh, rooms up there, amazing place, and now here we're this one. So you do have a great suite product, and you've been kind of redoing some of these over during the pandemic, right? Uh, we we have indeed, and uh, the public areas are completely redone now. Uh, on the room side, we've redone all the carpets, all the wall finishes, updated all the lighting accordingly, and we've been in every single room during the 
year of closure to make sure that they're all in really top uh, condition. We have aspirations over the next 12 months to redo all the carpets and curtains. Nothing noisy at all, but it's just taking a very proactive view uh, to do that uh, as we are extending the hotel uh, in the coming year or so uh, with another 29 rooms. And where will that extension come, come from? You're, bu- you're building next door or what yeah. are you doing? We, we have indeed b- bought, got a building next door from the American Embassy again, so that, that American <laughs> touch is still there. We're, we're now topped out already and we've got a year of fit out, so it doesn't disturb our hotel because it's a separate building and we'll literally just punch a hole through in January between the two buildings. Well, I'm going to have to come back for that one. I <laughs> you really will. You really will. And it's going to be a stunning hotel. So that's why we're upgrading the fabrics now of the uh, rooms here because the color schemes are all finalized for that project. Mm-hmm. So we're using the same color schemes there in the rooms here and brightening them up, improving the lighting. Lighting, And I think it's great that we're evolving, uh, but we're still keeping that very strong Art Deco aspect. And uh, it's good to see the Americans are back with 60% of our clientele are, are from the States now. So yeah, absolutely. Well, I had dinner here in your wonderful restaurant, The Colony, which I'll talk, we'll talk about in a second. But uh, it does seem, I heard a lot of American voices there, so I think they are back indeed. And let's let's talk about the food and beverage here, because that's one thing you have really made an impact here, because you did change things around. The Colony was there, uh, but you've you've turned uh, what had been the bar into another area now that called Gatsby's. And then the bar is now called uh, M- M- Le Magritte, uh, which is beautiful. But talk a little bit about what you've done with those things. Well, I think, you know, bearing in mind we're going to go to 101 rooms from the 72 rooms in, in a year's time, we wanted to redevelop those areas. We've worked with Terry Despont out of New York uh, so that we know that he's very good at c- creating comfortable uh, hotels and, and spaces for that market, which is very important to us and for others. Um, during the pandemic, we took 12 months to uh, redo uh, the colony. The colony has a fun, uh, great name. It's an american style grill. A lot brighter now, a lot more airy, and there's a lot of colorful panels. Uh, the art is amazing it really is and so for breakfast lunch and dinner is doing really well and then uh, Gatsby's room what used to be the bar is basically an afternoon tea room the grand ritual of afternoon tea uh, I think you probably witnessed this last weekend we were full Saturday we were full Saturday and, and I'll say in that night colony was full as well so. it, 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 indeed and so then we also looked at the front entrance of the hotel which is so important to have people feel this sense of arrival so instead of having cars parked out we've actually created a very big open terrace and uh, we've got 24 seats out there and an interconnectivity with the Magritte bar uh, which has really become a destination bar and we open our bar at seven o'clock in the morning so as, as one should right <laughs> should yeah some good bloody berries in there but uh, great lighting and so on so the concept that you can have coffees and teas and meetings tuck yourself away in the corner for with a book or a newspaper um, the hotel has a wonderful atmosphere in that respect so actually now I've got four outlets uh, with four very distinct uh, identities now as opposed to the two before Uh, so the people that have come back to the hotel have really enjoyed the extra facilities Um, and for those people that may be in doing business uh, they've got three or four facilities they can move around and have different appointments in so it's really makes a marked improvement uh, for the people that are staying in the hotel. And actually, and I'll just say, you're, I had a wonderful dinner at the Colony. It's, it's a grill. Uh, I had steak, uh, but it really is. And I had, a, a, this is the American part, you have a wonderful ice cream sundae, oh, which, 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 which can be customized to whatever you'd like. You have a little checklist, and uh, that was a wonderful touch. And I, I sort of recall that you might have had something similar before, but I, I, this was a great meal. We, we did indeed. The sundaes are very popular with everybody, grown-ups and kids. Uh, they love to put the right toppings on. Uh, 60% of the items on the menu are from the menu before they've been embellished uh, but the traditional aspects of the way it should be served is still there so that's what our clientele re- really enjoy but you know obviously Gatsby's is brand new afternoon tea you've got breakfast lunch light lunches checking in checking out uh, and dinners as well as cocktails champagne cocktails there from the Gatsby era and the Magritte bar has got the serious uh, drinks uh, you know from the Rat Pack if you like from the States yeah, so then you have pictures of the Rat Pack there we, we do indeed and, and then artwork has been very carefully p- chosen throughout the property you know there's that art deco feel the historic aspect to the art that we're putting through and we're following that through into the bedrooms as well so uh, you know making some great improvements yeah well i did the art is something i I did say earlier but you actually have a sheet of all the different art in the hotel it is sort of art deco but it's all these portraits that look like people in the 30s and things like that 
uh, uh, really throwbacks, except the bar where you have sort of things from the 60s and 70s, I think, really. Uh, but it is it is really, it, it, there is an American feel, but it is still very British as well. In, indeed, it really is. So the four outlets now are performing very well as we've come out of COVID. Hotel itself, we've been running 85% occupancy since September last year when we opened, with the exception of January, February. Uh, you know, but it really is looking very strong for the summer. We've got as much on the books as we had in 2019. I think it's the same with the rest of the market here in London, which is very, very confident. I think people should be confident now to come over. We've got obviously stringent cleaning aspects and still going through as we all need to to, to, to live with this uh, situation that we've been through. And of course, one thing I shouldn't let neglect is that you actually have a, a wonderful small spa downstairs and a wellness facilities and uh, uh, fitness rooms too down in the basement. Uh, we, we have indeed. In fact, the gym, we've now doubled in size from where it was, put brand new equipment throughout. Uh, we've added an additional treatment room. Uh, so we've got four treatment rooms. Uh, we've got a dip pool, sauna, steam room, and a hammam. Uh, you know, people love that treatment. Coming on from a long trip from the States, the Americans really love it. They really feel a million dollars once they've had it. You know, I, I was, I, I, they actually offered that to me, and I, I did not do it, which I should have when I was thinking about it. But I, I literally, actually, to be, the reason why I didn't do it is that you had the room ready already it was like i walk at nine ten o'clock and night and there there it was and i said i'm going up to stairs to the room and i took unfortunately a longer nap than i wanted to but uh i, I should have gone down to the mom that would have been interesting <laughs> indeed uh, and the beds are very comfortable here as well we've Absolutely. replaced those um the other thing of course is to talk about uh, the extension of the hotel and you know we are adding 29 rooms it's being very carefully orchestrated with terry dispond as well so there's this synergy that will go through it won't feel as though you've got one wing and another it will feel as one hotel um, and with the adjustments we've made in the food and beverage areas it can accommodate the breakfast aspects uh, very very comfortably as well as anybody that might be from outside the timing of that is uh, july august uh, next year for three or four of the floors and it'll be finished by september 1 2023 and then you've got an absolutely brand new proper property throughout well, time to come back in September 2023, right? It is. It. You'll, you'll be welcome to come back and, uh, and do it. And we'll, we'll, we'll set you up with an hammam on arrival. That time I'll go like that. Anything else you want to tell? We go out to about 100,000 uh, U.S. travel advisors. Um, uh, anything else you want to tell them about this hotel? Although it's, it's amazing how many U.S. travel advisors already know about it. Because for, for an eight-year hotel in a, in a market like London, which has, as you know of anybody, has so many different options and some great hotels here. You've been overseeing a bunch of them. Uh, but but the, for whatever reason, this, this hotel caught fire at the beginning and it's not stopped. Yeah. Well, I think from a point of view, I want to be able with your readers and, and listeners here to assure you that we kept 140 staff on through the pandemic the owner the new owner fully paid for for them during that time so any clientele that are coming back to the hotel have the same doorman the same concierge the same receptionists and and, and restaurant people that they would recognize from before of course some new staff which is a normal situation to have very bespoke service we've added a wonderful humidor in the hotel which is a wonderful piece from a guy called maximo in italy a wonderful piece there people can actually smoke cigars out on the front and i'm adding in a, a wonderful wine wine wall in the colony, uh, a thousand bottles of wine and a, look, a good feature of American wines as well there, in fact. That's what I had the other night. I had an American, you suggested an American wine and I'm saying, do you have a lot of American wines? They said, we have a pretty good stash for that. For the, and I, I, it was a great steak and uh, a, a good, I, I only had a glass, but uh, it was really a, a wonderful dinner. But I think that sounds like a great addition. It really does. And, and our owner here, uh, Zayed Holdings, wonderful family, and they, are, they just want the very best for the property. They want to understand very clearly what it what it has been uh, where we are now where we're sitting in the London market and they want to keep that niche of being a secluded uh, discreet uh, you know hotel a boutique hotel in that respect um, in Mayfair fantastic well and I think if you want to go for more information the Beaumont.com uh, and and you find out more but really come over yourselves and and I know we there's some travel advisors here uh, to visit uh, well I was here and and you'll find out about this wonderful property and meet you and uh, find out all about the things that are going to happen in the future, which uh, I did not know, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, look, James, thanks for the opportunity to speak to you and to your, to your colleagues and uh, everyone out there. Um, we're very excited about the future, so please, you're welcome to come and see us at the Beaumont. I'm James Schillinglaw at the Beaumont here in London, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>